View 3.5 dropped this week, so let's talk about what's new. There's some performance updates, SSR improvements, and then some other one-off features that add new ways of working with Vue. From the performance side, Vue's reactivity system had another refactor that gives better performance and significantly improved memory usage. There's also better reactivity tracking for large, deeply reactive arrays, and according to the release blog post, it can make some operations up to 10 times faster. And the best part is that this is all internal, so we don't have to change any of our code to get these performance benefits. There's a few SSR features like the new Use ID Composable that guarantees you have the same value on across the server and the client to prevent hydration errors. It's basically the Nux use ID composable that's been around since 3.10, but after these changes, Nux actually refactored their composable to just use this under the hood. And the other SSR feature I want to talk about is lazy hydration. I already made a full video about it that I'll link down below, but it basically lets us have more control over when the JavaScript for async components loads and executes. So instead of having to hydrate your whole app at the page load, we can say that some components below the fold are only hydrated when they're visible on the screen. That's just one example of how this can be used. And honestly, this is a pretty low level API, and I don't think most of us are going to be using this code directly, and instead we'll more directly use whatever Nux builds on top of it. But this is one of the features I'm most excited about, so if you want to learn more, check out the video I made. Now let's talk about those miscellaneous features that dropped in this release. First, reactive property structuring is now stable and enabled by default. And if you don't know what this is, it means that we can write code like this. Without reactive property structuring, these values wouldn't be reactive and wouldn't update. But now, not only are they reactive, but we can also use that regular JavaScript syntax to set default values for our props here. So for me, the value of this is it's way better to set default values. However, it can get a little bit harder to remember that if we're passing this prop to a function, we need to use a getter to maintain reactivity. When we access values with props.whatever, seeing the props here is a good reminder that we should use a getter. But now that it's destructured, it can just look like a normal variable. But thanks to TypeScript and Views Compiler, we should be able to catch most of these issues when we're building. Next up, the feature I'm most curious about is deferred teleport. Previously, we could use teleport to move part of our component's template to a different part of the DOM. This had one caveat though. The target had to already be in the DOM before our component mounted. For example, we couldn't use a target that's in the same component as our teleport. But with defer, we can tell this teleport to mount after the current render cycle. This means that we can target any element mounted the same tick as our component. And this gives a ton of new ways to use teleport. Instead of teleport just being viewed as a way to render something outside of our view app, like a modal, we can actually throw template code around in our view app. I'm still playing around with this and chatting with some folks about what's possible, but I'm working on a video of some really cool use cases of the deferred teleport. So if you want to see that, make sure you go down and subscribe to the channel. And there's also a ton of other changes that I'm not going to go in depth on, but you can read about in the blog post and changelog link below. The biggest one is probably use template ref, but that's going to take a whole separate video. Some other changes are that teleport now works inside transition. You can suppress hydration mismatch warnings on things like dates. And there's also a ton of upgrades to the define custom element API, which to be honest, I've never used, so I'm not going to talk about it. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this release. Leave a comment on which is your favorite feature, and I'll see you in the next video.